welcome to Under the Birch Tree episode 3. Um, my name is Claire. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry when Ravelry sorts itself out as Under the Birch Tree. Um, please come and find me. Please like this video and subscribe so that you can um, get your notifications when I post new videos, which are hopefully going to be every two to three weeks. I didn't record last week because I've got a bit of a sore hand, which partly um, could be to do with knitting. I have seen the video, but I think also may have been triggered by um, using crutches when I injured my foot right at the beginning of lockdown. Um, it is getting better though, but it does mean that I haven't, didn't have a lot of work to show you from um, that if I podcasted last weekend. So um, I've got quite a lot to talk about again today, but hopefully this podcast won't be quite so long. I realise that I've probably filled the podcast a bit too much last time, so I'm going to try and tone it down a little bit, um, which is a happy coincidence that I have hurt my hand and therefore haven't got so much to do. I've got um, a finished object to show you. I've got a finished object in the past, which I'm going to talk about because of the yarn that I used for it. I've got an acquisition to show you. Um, I'm not going to be doing it in all this order, by the way. It's a bit more jumbled than this. Um, and I'm going to talk about colour work and my learning how to do stranded colour work. I've also got a bit of crochet to talk about this time as well. So first of all, I want to show you the progress that I have made on stuff so far. So I've become a little, little bit monogamous in the last week or so because of my hand. Um, it's all very well. I mean, I, I knit quite quickly and I knit a lot. So when I'm working on a lot of projects at a time, which I usually do, I do still get stuff completed relatively regularly. And that's kind of one of the things I like about knitting um, polygamously. <laughs> because I um, because I'll, I'll have a kind of rolling program of items that are about to be completed um, and items that I've recently started and such like. So, but when I can't knit very often because I need to um, tone it down because of my sore hand, um, then I try and stick into one thing. Um, so I have got one thing completed, which I'll show you later, but I'm going to show you the thing that I'm focusing on finishing now, which should um, hopefully be finished um, within the next week. So I'll be able to show you the whole thing. Sorry for dropping the camera then. Um, and this is in the project bag, one of the project bags that mum made me. Hello mum. Um, she's at Ginger Almonds on Instagram. But she doesn't sell these. She started making them in lockdown out of boredom. <laughs> I love this. Look at the bees. They're really cute. Um, and also, my project um, actually goes with it. You see the yarn that's in it. It matches, which is doubly pleasing. This is her most recent make, so she's just she's just practicing and getting better and better all the time. Um, so this, the project that is in this is my A Hint of Summer sweater and I think last time I forgot to tell you some details about each project so I'm going to try and be more careful to remember all those bits and bobs that, that I always like to hear when I'm doing podcasters. So last time I showed you this I had completed the body and the neckline, I think I finished the neckline and um, discovered I've got a massive loop here hanging from somewhere. Oh. Well, I'll fix that later. <laughs> um, but I've now got a sleeve. Da -da -da! And I have literally this morning just uh, picked up the stitches for my second sleeve. Um, so last night when I when I cast this off, I, um, I tried it on. And I think I said last time I was a little bit worried about the shape and size of it um, because it's, it's very wide, it's meant to be very wide, um, but it's also, although I've knit it the length they told me to knit it, um, the designer says to knit it, it's, um, it, it looks very short, but I think that's because of the width of it. And when I tried it on, um, it was great, it was great, and it's going to be even greater once it's, once it's um, blocked and once I've sorted out this random loop that I've got that's sticking up. I don't know why that's there. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be able to work out how to fix that. So, um, yeah, I'm really pleased with this. This is uh, A Hint of Summer by Isabel Kramer. 
and it, it is made with fleece witch baby alpaca and silk which is the white yarn and um, the uh, orangey colour is five moons nana two ply which is, she doesn't make anymore which is um, superwash BFL and silk and I'm just going to turn the light off a second so that you can see the white colour because last time it really blew the white out so I'm hoping that you can see that a little bit better now so I'm really pleased with this I wasn't a when I first knit, cast off the um, the body but now I've tried it on I'm quite excited about it I think it's going to I think it's going to look nice I shall wear it in the summer with um, a white vest top underneath I mean, it is designed to be very drapey, and um, happily I've chosen some drapey yarn. It's made with lace weight yarn, um, and it's, um, I think it's, I hope it's going to look great, but we shall see. Fingers crossed. So it should be finished, I hope, in a week, less than a week, um, because those sleeves don't take too long to do. Um, I did try doing them two at a time, but with the stripes as well, um, uh, it was just too much of a pain. I just I couldn't I couldn't hack it. I did two at a time on the sweater that I finished, but um I I was never going to manage it with that. I think I, I did have a go and then I thought this isn't going to work. Too tangly, so I I undid it and, and just went to do one at a time. But it's fine. They're not taking too long to do. I'm just going to straighten this camera. I think that my um tightening thing isn't isn't very good. Um, so that's that's what I'm working on at the moment and I'm really pleased with that. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is um, I'm going to talk about my other my actual finished objects but I want to talk about some other stuff first because it's part of my um, journey with learning stranded colour work. So I have done colour work knitting before but not stranded colour work. So I've done plenty of shawls with two or three colours in and I've done mosaic knitting plenty of times, but stranded colour work I've, I've just not done. Not for any particular reason, just none of the patterns that I've seen have, have inspired me. So, but when I started looking at doing sweaters, which I talked about last week, last uh, episode, I realised that I, I was getting very inspired by some of these uh, colour work yoke sweaters. And um, I particularly got inspired when I, someone, I think mum, pointed me to a thread on Ravelry about minimalist colour work yoke sweaters that just had two colours. And um, I, I got really inspired by those, really, really beautiful. And I just thought, I really want to learn how to do colour work so that I can make something beautiful like that. Um, a friend of mine said, well, you know, if you can knit, you can do colour work. But I realised that actually it takes a bit of practice. So my first project that I decided to try was just a hat with some leftover yarn and I'm going to show a quick picture of where I got to with that. I did give up on it in the end. Um, the pattern was great. The yarn choices weren't great. Um, the rainbow yarn was just certain points just didn't show up enough against the blue. They looked great together in games but um, couldn't really see the pattern and um, I think that I was knitting at too tight a tension, too tight a gauge because it wasn't going to go on my head and didn't really have anybody whose head it would go on. I wasn't enjoying knitting it because I knew that the first part of it wasn't going so well while I was learning how to do it and because you couldn't see the pattern well as well and it wasn't really going to fit anyone I really kind of felt a bit disheartened and thought there's no point in me finishing this project so I just decided to stop. Um, but I did learn quite a lot from it. And one of the things I did, which I did try a second time and have since decided I'm just not going to do, is that I used magic loop. And that, um, you know, maybe that was a rookie error, but it really didn't work. Getting that tension of the float across the back um, at the edge of the magic loop caused me real problems. I just couldn't really get it to work right. Um, so that was... That was one thing that I didn't, I suppose the beginning of my learning happened on that project and the, the last part of my learning where I decided well, I'm just never going to do that again happened on my next project. The other thing that I learned was to 
do colour work in the round on a small item at least, inside out. And I had that tip from Katie Green of the Green Bean podcast right in one of her very early ones, possibly her first podcast. And you can see from this photo the difference that it made. This is a photo that I sent to our yarn, my Yarny Friends and Mind's WhatsApp group. And you can see the difference that that made in evening out the tension. So that was a really useful tip. So if I'm knitting anything small in the round, I shall definitely do that again in the future. Um, and I think that's... I think those are the main things that I took away from that project and apart from choosing your colours a bit more wisely so that you get that contrast and sometimes you don't want contrast you want it to be quite similar so that it's quite a subtle look but it wasn't going to work for this pattern the pattern was too busy so that with a subtle look you didn't you couldn't see an effect at all so so that was that and then I um, went on to decide to try another hat this time a little baby hat with again some leftover yarn um, and this is the hat and I cannot remember, I'm really sorry I managed not to make a Ravelry project page, I can't remember what it is. So if you know this pattern, please let me know in the bottom, um, in a comment. But I, um, I'm half pleased with it. I did a tubular bind off, uh, no I didn't, no I didn't do a tubular bind on with this, so I've done with this. Um, so this I knit again with um, doing a magic loop and again didn't really work so this was the project that I thought I'm just going to have to make sure I always use the right length cable for the project. Um, and the reason for that is when you get to the edge of the magic loop, which I can show you on this sleeve here because I'm doing this sleeve as a magic loop. To it. Right, when you get to the end of the loop, you kind of need to give it a tug, well I find I do anyway, to get it to tighten across that gap between the needles. And of course, if you've got a, um, a float running across the back of there, you can't do that tug. <laughs> and it's really difficult to work out how to get the right tension across that gap. Uh, and it, I just, I never achieved it and it's going to be different every time but depending on the length of the float as well. So what that meant was that at the edge of um, the pattern you can just about see here, so this is, um, this is the, the, where the uh, edge of the magic loop was and you can see it just creates this much more uneven tension compared to here. So I learned that, so that was a good thing to learn. I also learned that the yarn choice does matter quite a bit and I ch just briefly mentioned that last time. And I possibly, um, I've talked before in my first episode about using different kinds of yarns together. I can see in colour work that it needs to be the same kind of yarn and also I can see that depending on the look you want to get, if you want to get a nice, um, a more traditional look, you need yarns that are quite sticky, where the colours will not merge together, but will um, fluff up to kind of meet each other, the different stitches. Um, this is superwash yarn, um, well some of it is, the, the blue is superwash merino silk and yak, and the grey is alpaca silk and goat. And it's not got a lot of loftiness to it. It's not got a. It's got a bit of halo from the from the alpaca, but I I don't think that the alpaca halo is particularly sticky and, and grabby. So you don't get that um, sort of knitting together of the stitches, as it were. So they they're much more defined. And what that means, I'm learning, is that you don't have a lot of. It's not very forgiving. If your stitches aren't even, you'll see it. <laughs> you'll really see it. Um, so that's the other thing I've learned is to just be a bit more savvy with my yarn choices. Um, equally, and this is nothing to do with the colour work, this hat is very floppy because of all the alpaca and silk in it and it's not got a lot of give in it. So it's, it's not great as a hat actually. Um, my tension did get better on this than in the first hat. Look at these lovely neat floats. I'm very pleased with these. Um, but it could definitely do with some improvement in 
So, um, sorry about that blip. Um, yes, the, the, I just need to improve the evenness really of the tension across the whole project and part of that will definitely improve when I'm using a cable that is the right length for the project. Um, so the next project that I, um, I've got to show you is a finished object. This is my only finished object. <laughs> Um, and that is in this project bag, which is my mum's prototype project bag. Um, <coughs> and this is my dancing T-Rex sweater, which I'm very, very pleased with. Um, it, I wish that I had a model to try it on, but I don't. Um, it's got a um, short row shaping at the back, so you can see the back's a little taller than at the front. Um, I love this little detail at the bottom of the hem with the spotty bits and the, the, as it goes onto the arm. Um, one thing I will say about this pattern is the, the amount of yarn that she suggests wasn't right for me at all. Um, so she said a certain number of balls of the grey and a certain number of balls of the blue and I needed one fewer ball of the grey and one more ball of the blue which was a little frustrating. I think I mentioned last time I had to wait for the yarn to arrive and um, initially it was out of stock and I thought I wasn't going to get any but but I did and I finished it and I'm very very pleased with it. Um, I love these cute little, um, little dinosaurs, they're absolutely lovely. So I am pleased with how this has turned out, but I have learned some stuff about colour work again from it, which I expected to. And it's why I've knitted a small, I'm working on small items first, because I've got some of this Drops Puna. This is made with Drops Puna. This is grey and this is jeans blue. I've got some of this to make a sweater for me, um, grey but with a purpley colour rather than the blue. And I don't want to embark on a big project for me until I know that I'm knowing how to do it because otherwise I know I won't wear it. And I don't mind if I mess up my first sweaters. I'm expecting to do that. I spoke last time about the process of learning. But what I don't want is to... I want to give myself a fighting chance. So um, that's what all of this colour work is about really. And, and looking at this, she recommends, Natalie V, who designed the Dancing T-Rex sweater, she recommends you go up a needle size for the colour work. And I think that that's because a lot of knitters will loosen their gauge, uh, tighten their gauge for colour work. Um, but I don't think that I have done. If I show you here, um, these stitches are definitely larger than these stitches. And I think that it is, um, I think it has made a difference. Um, so I think that for my next project, which is that cardigan I mentioned last time, and hopefully I will have started to show you, so I can show you in the next podcast. I think that that is um, I will I will stay with the same needle needle size next time when I go on to the next onto the colour work um, part of the project. Um, however, I am also aware that this looks different because my gauge my tension is not even still. Um, you can see there's a little tiny bit of puckering um, and also just the general looseness of it. So I'm pleased with what I've done, I'm pleased with the progress I've made, it's worked well um, but it's definitely better than the hat, which is definitely better than the hat I made before um, but I need to continue practicing to get good and I recognise that is just part of the process. Um, for transparency I shall show you the floats on the back, which are relatively even. They're not too bad. Um, and the other thing I did is that, um, and I'm sorry if I've already said this, but I've had to record this section three times, so I'm forgetting what I've said and what I haven't said. Um, I used a cable the right length for the project, so I didn't get that issue with the, um, the, Oh my goodness! I want to say two at a time, but that's not what I'm. What I, the words I want to use? Magic loop. I didn't get that issue with the magic loop. Um. So that's good. That's good. That's a good piece of learning, and I will make sure I've always got the right length cable to do whatever project I'm going to do.
So that's my dark green T-Rex sweater, my finished object. Now the next thing I want to talk about is, um, well, it's an acquisition initially, but before I talk about the acquisition, I want to talk about a previous finished object from, from the past. Um, this is a project that I made. I bought the wall for it at Wonderwall quite a lot of years ago, possibly the first one I went to. And it's from the lovely Midwinter Yarns. Um, and the woman who runs Midwinter Yarns is absolutely lovely. And I can't remember her name at all, but she's really, really sweet and helpful. And she had a sample of this shawl on her stand. And I absolutely fell in love with it. I fell in love with the way the colours worked together. And um, I just bought the yarn that it was made from and I went with it. Now, I was quite naive about yarn in those days. Um, and... Well, I as I made it, I realised that it was pretty scratchy, woolly yarn. And at the time, I didn't like that. I got quite a sore finger from missing it. And the um, bits of yarny, lofty stuff coming off the yarn got caught in my throat quite a bit. I, am, I do have asthma. But I found that I was coughing and sneezing an awful lot while I was working on the project. In fact, in the end, I think Mum completed it for me because I really wanted to finish it, but I, it was just so uncomfortable to work with. Um, and then when I finished it, it was it was quite a scratchy project. So I'll show it to you now. I will say now I have fallen back in love with it. <laughs> this is not the first project that I have hated when I've completed it and then grown to love. In fact, initially, my mother-in-law took it off my hands because she loved it, um, and then she found it too scratchy and she gave it back to me. <laughs> um, but I've since realised that even a scratchy item, if you put it over other clothes, then you can't feel the scratchiness. And real, real wool, which this is, so this is Old Centrum 2-ply, and it's 100% 100 Swedish wool from Öland, and it is not superwash. It's really earthy, woolly wool. <laughs> It's lovely uh, and warm, but it is um, it is scratchy. And I think that's something I need to work on um, tolerating because this yarn is, is actually it's really nice to have this woody yarn. It smells, still smells sheepy, <laughs> even though it's been blocked and I've had it for a few years. So here it is. This is the Off-Kilter Shawlette by Shannon Squire. Um, and it is literally that, an off-kilter shawlette. This is a, a asymmetrical semicircle. Um, and it's made with gradient yarn. So you can see that this uh, lighter colour is light here and then dark grey here. And then this purpley colour is dark purple here. And, um, and that shifts and change through, changes through the shawl. I love this purple. It's really nice. So this, it is scratchy against the skin. And I, I think the problem is, is that a lot of the shawls that I knit, I do wear close to my skin. I have them bunched up around my neck. Excuse me, knocking the microphone. And so this doesn't work like that. It's too scratchy. It doesn't work like this either because I'm wearing a strappy top. But normally, <laughs> in the winter, I'll wear it on my shoulders over a dressing gown or a jumper. And it is so warm. Um, it's absolutely perfect. So this has worked out really well, actually, and I have since fallen in love with it. It's also made me think a bit more, as well as watching podcasts, um, particularly watching Lerke on Fibre Tales podcast. Um, it's made me think a lot more about non-superwash yarns and some of these um, more rustic yarns. So that leads me nicely on then to my acquisition, which is what I wanted to, to talk then about. So all my recent acquisitions in the last few years have been um, sort of superwash type yarns, really rich, hand dyed, and the sort of dye colour you can only really get with superwash yarns, maybe with silk and alpaca and things in. And I wanted to have a go at knitting with some more rustic yarns. I wanted to sort of get back to that ethos, really. Um, Ironically, in a minute when I talk about crochet, I'm going to be talking about the complete opposite of that, which is basically 100% acrylic, but we'll come on to that. <laughs> so this wool that I've bought, I decided I wanted to get some DK wool to make um, some nice thick bed socks with, now that I'm back into sock knitting. 
So this will be my next sock project. Um, and this is, um, I've got two skeins of it. And it is by Bluebell Yarns. And it is 100% British white face woodland. Spun in Yorkshire, dyed in Dorset, and this is the Fern Callaway. Um, and <laughs> as I said, all the yarns I get, you just, they drapey and floppy and they feel soft and silky. <laughs> and this is a new thing for me, really, apart from that shawl that I just mentioned. And actually, I love it. <laughs> I love it that this, it's got a lot more give to it. It's really, really bouncy. Um, I love, I do like the colour. It's not quite the same as it was on the screen. It wasn't really what I was expecting. Um, but that's that's the luck of the draw you get when you buy online and it's the excitement of seeing what's going to come out when you, when you get it out of the envelope. Um, um, but I'm really pleased with it and it's certainly going to make a really nice pair of bed socks. And there's one thing I don't really understand about sock knitting the socks that I make never use as much yarn as they say so I may end up getting two pairs out of this um, but we'll see um, this was on sale so these were not so expensive and then as you can see here a little little goodie tucked in the end which is a little stitch marker a little bluebell stitch marker um, Obviously, because my zoom on my camera is not very good, you can't really see it. This is the sort of stitch marker I love the best. These ones with the um, the little loop of, of uh, jewellery wire. So I love it when you get a little free gift. Most most independent dyers get those at the end of something, don't they? This is just to be just tucked in the tucked in the top like that. So that's my acquisition, and with that yarn, I will be making these socks, which are the Juniper socks by Helen Stewart of Curious Handmade. Um, I love the texture on these socks. I'm not going to be doing the um, uh, contrast heel and toe, um, but I think these are going to make a really nice pair of bed socks. Um, I do wear Sometimes two or three pairs of socks and a pair of slippers in the winter, my feet get very, very cold. I've also got coming some nine inch circulars in the right size for these these socks. So I, I think I am definitely a nine inch circular convert. Uh, they'll also come in handy if I decide to make any colour work socks for the same reason I've mentioned just been talking about. So that's, um, that's my acquisitions and um, my little conversation about rustic yarns <laughs> um, and now I want to tell you a bit about some of the crochet that I've been working on. So I just, I did briefly mention earlier about the sort of yarn that I, <laughs> I tend to use to crochet. Um, I'm not a fan of crocheted clothing. Um, I don't think I've crocheted a shawl before. I don't really like the drape of it for that kind of project, personally, um, but I have crocheted a lot of blankets. I've crocheted some soft toys and cushion covers and things. Um, the issue with crocheting blankets is they're very big and they take a lot of yarn. Um, the first blanket I crocheted was the Sophie's Universe blanket. During the year, in that it was actually did it along with the crochet along. It's the first crochet along, knit along, make along thing I'd ever done, and it was for a wedding present. And um, I was really, really pleased with it, and I enjoyed the whole process. It was the biggest project I've ever made, um, and I don't think I've got any pictures of it. And if I have, I'll put it up here. Um, but I literally used the pack that she used, so it pretty much looks like what's on her website. Um, I then went on to make a lot of other blankets and I used um, the kind of universal language of blanket crochet wool which is Stylecraft Special GK which um, nearly every blanket crochet will have used at some point and an awful lot used all the time. And my friends and I and my mum we all got a bit addicted to Stylecraft Special DK. it's 100% acrylic and it comes in a gazillion different colours. 
and that is the joy of it. You can, a lot of people have got the pegs, like Attic 24, she's got the yarn pegs with all the, the Starcraft colours on, and you can um, just sit and make these combinations of colours. It's so much fun, you get a lot of fun from that, and I really, really enjoy it. However, it is 100% acrylic, and although the colours are exciting to work with because of the patterns you can make when you crochet, it's very different from what you can do with knitting. You can't do the same stuff with knitting as you can with crochet. Um, yeah, I think I have got to a point where I'm a bit bored of it. And because I crocheted with it for such a long time, I have got far too much stash, possibly enough to open my own shop. <laughs> so I'm not, if I decide not to use it again, I'm not quite sure what I'll do with it. Um, but it is great for blankets because you can just chuck them in the wash. And if you're using blankets as a nice bedspread in your grown-up bedroom, you don't need to chuck them in the wash very often. But if they're blankets for kids to snuggle up under when they're watching TV or to have in their bedroom, they do need to be washable. So it, Starcraft Special DK has got a lot going for it. I just think I'm a little bored. Anyway, I've brought a, a, an object that I finished a long time ago to show you first. Got a glimpse of it then. This is the um, Mystical Lanterns blanket. Now I spent a year, not, not really a whole year though, but the, the crochet doesn't take as long as knitting, it grows up much faster, um, making a blanket for each of my children and my husband. Um, this is Poppy's blanket. So this is the Mystical Lanterns blanket by Jane Crowfoot. I'm not going to tell you all the different colours in it, um, some of them I'll know off by heart, I think that's shrimp. Um, this is pale rose, Oops, grape. <laughs> um, my friends and I got very good at identifying all the colours but I've, I've lost my touch a little bit because I haven't, I haven't done it for a little while. I think that's stone or could be parchment. Um, <laughs> But, um, I have got a little bored of making these blankets. This I'm really, really pleased with. Um, uh, it's quite simple. I have made a lot of very complicated blankets in my time, but this one's quite simple. It's just granny squares that are in the shape of, sort of, lantern shapes. And you, you crochet lengths of them, and then you um, join them together at the back. I kind of wish I'd join them together at the front, actually, because I like the back. I like the look of the back. And it's got a lovely border along the top. Um, yeah, so that's really, I'm really pleased with that. Um, and then I mentioned all the leftovers that I have from all the gazillions of projects I have. And sometimes every now and then I get all these leftovers together and I think, oh, I'm going to make something with that. And I look for a blanket and then I start to make it and I realise I haven't got enough so I have to top up with other stuff. And then I end up with a bunch of other leftovers again. <laughs> So I, um, I decided I wanted to make um, a blanket with some leftovers and I decided that I was going to join in with a crochet long, kaleidoscope crochet long, which is by Catherine Bly, I think, and she's, she's made some really lovely blankets in her time and I've made a couple of her patterns and I love them. But I very quickly realised when I started making this that I was not going to enjoy making a kaleidoscope blanket. And so I decided to use the colours in something else. And so this is what I'm making with these colours. And I'm really, really pleased with this, how this is turning out. This is the Starburst, no, sorry, the Sunburst Granny Square Blanket by Jenny Hoogaboom. And I'm using the Continuous Join As You Go by Cypress Textiles. This is quite a famous pattern, uh, this, this Sunburst. A lot of people use it for lots of different things. Um, and I love this Continuous Join As You Go. I love this. Uh, braided effect that you get. It's really lovely. This is not growing very quickly, this pattern, this blanket, because as I said, I think I'm a little bit bored of the yarn and I think most knitters and crochets would agree that, that we all have different things that keep us keep our interest in a pattern and sometimes it's the lushness of the yarn, sometimes it's the lushness of the colours you're using 
and sometimes it's just the soothing nature of doing the same stitch over and over again when you're very stressed and you just need some time out or while you're watching TV and sometimes it's the patterns that you're creating you know that's the delight of colour work is what I enjoyed about making this even though it didn't look very even watching these patterns develop was really exciting this blanket on the other hand I've made a lot of blankets with the same motif over and over again I'm losing interest and it's a real shame because I just I love how it's turning out um, so I'm, I'm determined to stick with it because I've got another blanket in the pipeline made with n not Starcraft Special DK with a different sort of yarn um, that's got cotton in and um, I'm sorry I've got a very scratchy nose because I think because of all the fluffy yarn and I've got the window shut because it's um, noisy outside and I possibly should have taken my antihistamine because I can feel my nose blocking. <laughs> um, anyway, we'll be finished soon. So, um, yeah, so I've got another blanket on the horizon that I think it's got cotton in the, in the yarn. It'll be a very different feel and it'll be something different for me because I've made so much with Starcraft Special DK. But I'm, I think I'm going to have to finish this first. And that project I'm planning to buy the yarn for in a couple of months. So I need to crack on, really. Um, I've got... So the, each row is 16 squares long and I've got five um, columns done and I'm halfway through you can see the current column that I'm in I tend to do the columns first do it some people do it uh, row by row but I, I like to do column by column because then you feel like you're getting somewhere quicker maybe <laughs> so um, yeah that is that blanket and that is my crochet and that is all I have to talk about today in this in this podcast. Thank you very, very much for joining me and coming back. If you've come back to, um, if you've watched the podcast before, thank you very, very much for joining me if you're a new, pod, uh, new viewer. I'm really pleased to have you. Please like and subscribe, leave me comments, drop in on my Instagram um, on my Ravelry, if you can see Ravelry at the moment, hopefully Ravelry will sort themselves out soon. Um, and I look forward to podcasting again, hopefully within two or three weeks. Bye bye. <laughs>